friends, how are we today? Episode 6, crazy, episode 6, Coffee with Friends starts now, today we are Common Kitchen Uh-Ohs, we are talking uh, how to get the most out of your coffee, and here's Natalie right now. So, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are we? How are we? Good. How are you? Great. I just finished. Yeah. Literally right to the minute. <laughs> How are you, baby brew? What you drinking? Today, I'm drinking Traffic. Very fun bag. Traffic is from Montreal, I believe. This is Ethiopia and Brazil. In the cup, tastes like chocolate cake, wild berry preserves, and almonds. And the bag is fun. Is it delicious? It is delicious. Good. How about you? I'm drinking Rome at Home's Sugar Cookie Cold Brew. Ooh. Which this batch was made. With Stalking Crown. Wow. That's our first collab effort. Collab. So, Love that. It's delicious. Also, it required no effort because I just poured it from a jug. Cheers. I'm jealous of that. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to. I was like, it's snowy outside. Do I even want cold brew? Yes. Yes, I do. It's so good. I'm not mad at all about drinking cold coffee right now. If people don't know what Roman Home is, you want to explain briefly what, what that is? Yeah, so I, if you don't know me, I have a coffee cart, Rome Coffee. We do these 64 ounce jugs called Rome at Home. And so you can get plain cold brew. And then we also usually do like two seasonal drinks in the in the room at home. So right now our seasonal is a sugar cookie cold brew and a coconut caramel cold brew. Let me tell you, they are both delicious. I believe you. Both out of this world, just phenomenal. So <laughs> very happy with them. And we'll have a, we usually keep my, my seasonals for like two months. And then, yeah. yeah. So if you want to order from at home, go to my Instagram, go to Rome's Instagram, click the link tree. Go to online store or whatever the link tree says on online store. Yep. Pre-order. Pre-order whatever you want. Pickup is on Saturday at Marcus by Dream Day in Bowmanville. Yep. Yes. And you get like, it's 64 ounces, so it's like eight bucks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sweet. What are we uh, talking about today? I think I, I already gave people a summary at the beginning before I jumped in. Uh, kitchen uh ohs. Kitchen uh -oh. how to get the most out of your coffee is kind of in tandem with that. Yeah. So, where do you want to start? Um, one I was thinking about was so, like, on the basis of just saying, like, how do you get the most out of your coffee? Mm -hmm. How do you not waste beans? Mm. Besides spilling them, <laughs> like. Outside of accidents happening, which I spilled half a bag of beans yesterday, and I'm still mourning that loss because Ooh. they, like, fell into the sink. There's no saving that. No. no. So they're gone. Um, and we were chatting about, Matt and I were chatting about how using coffee ratios really helps you get the most out of your coffee because what I found, and even feedback I've gotten from people that listen to Coffee with Friends, when we chatted about ratios the first time, I had people say, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I've been, oh, I've been using too much coffee. Yep. So they had been using too many beans. They hadn't been using, they could, they didn't realize that they could use less um, and, and get a phenomenal cup and yes. actually a better cup. Um, yep. So that coffee ratio, and I think we, you know, we've chatted about kind of the one to 16 is kind of that mm -hmm. food, one to 15, one to 17. And what that means is for every one gram of coffee, I'm using... 15 grams, 16 grams, 17 grams of water. Yep. Um, 
And I don't think people realize it's a lot less coffee than your tablespoon method will tell you. And it, but it also produces yeah. a, a way better cup if you're following your brewing protocol properly. Um, right. And I think what people need to understand is like, there's probably coffee's got it like a, a cup of coffee's got to be like 90 98 i thought i heard 98 like 98 percent water yeah and like only a few percent coffee so you really want to get that coffee um like ratio down otherwise it, it's gonna the water is just gonna kind of I don't know, accentuate all the wrong parts, basically. Well, like, it's so true, because I think what people think is, oh, I'll put more coffee in because I want a stronger cup. Yeah. But there's so many, but then what happens is you get an overdeveloped cup because yeah. the water can only hold so much solubles, solubles mm -hmm. from the coffee. So yeah. it gets super muddied. It gets, like, that right. classic dinery, like, drinking yeah. kind of sludge taste. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to have a strong cup while still using an appropriate amount of beans, you have tons of other options. You yeah. can like sticking to ratio. You can take your grind finer. If you feel like it's not getting that spec, the, the flavor that I'm wanting, well, maybe your, um, your grind is too coarse. Yeah. And if you take it finer, you have more surface area on your yeah. on your grinds and your water can actually, it takes longer to go through if you're doing a pour yeah. over you're doing a pour over it takes longer for your water to go through and actually mm. get a longer extraction time so right. there's other there's other ways to get that strong cup without overloading your brewing method with coffee with that with yep. fresh fries yeah um, which is a common common uh-oh common uh-oh and i want more strength i'm gonna put triple the amount of coffee in yeah and it's like okay well your bag just went in like three days so yeah or one one day <laughs> if you have a family yeah, and you're like we need to load this coffee maker like with the whole bag it's done it's done that's, i mean that's an expensive lifestyle i cannot afford so neither yeah. can us <laughs> Yo, i barely buy coffee like i can <laughs> i was on a budget i work yep, yep. I was on a budget yes um, so, and, and it, oh, we know coffee is expensive. So yeah. sticking to a coffee ratio and then tweaking your recipe within that ratio is going to deliver you probably the best cup once you're done tweaking it, however you like to your taste. But it's also yeah. going to save you some money and keep you from wasting coffee. Yes. Yeah. Next uh-oh is... Uh, do, 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 do. Ooh! Cleanliness. Ooh. So, I love I've I've had a lot of conversations about this with people, and a lot of the time, uh, our experiences with weird tasting coffee or just like strange cups every once in a while or whatever can often be traced back to dirty equipment. So even though you might not see it, doesn't mean oil is not on it. And just because you can't see the inside of the machine doesn't mean it stays clean. So these are all things you gotta take into account. So using uh, a clean kettle and good water is also, is, are both great ways to start so look inside your kettle see how if there's some bits floating around in there or it's a little caked with some stuff uh just like from your town water or wherever you live um that can get caked in there over time so what i like to do is just run some i boil some vinegar in there half vinegar half water um and that just cleans that all out and it's cost effective that's just what i do and for machines there are cleaning products available that are safe to put into your brewer or i'm sure you could probably pinch with something that would be oh like a <laughs> type. diy 
Yeah, yeah, good DIY, but I, I will not speak to that because I don't know anything about it. I would be worried about a DIY. Right. Because it depends on the machine. Point. Some of them could be could handle it maybe, but some of them might be like, mm. well, some machines gonna, might. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like if you're doing like a French press, then yeah. like you shouldn't need anything crazy. Like as long as you're cleaning it every day, you should yeah. be. But if you have like a coffee machine or if you have an espresso machine at home, yeah. those things get build up because you're having a hard time getting the grinds the coffee grounds mm -hmm. out of where everything is so yeah. like a press of v60 i mean i hope you're washing everything in your dishwasher you yeah. should be fine if you have any yeah. sort of espresso machine or even um a mocha pot like a stove top that yeah. will wipe out a little bit better too because you're you're not i don't run my mocha pot to the dishwasher now i'm wondering if you can mm. um, i don't maybe you could um, I'm even thinking of some people's home espresso machines. I know there's one popular one uh, called the Jura, and that one's kind of notorious for getting gummed up if your grind is – maybe in general terms, the grind isn't actually that fine. But for this machine, for some reason, if it's, it gets a little too fine, it gets gummed up, and then it ruins – the way it's brewing and the inside needs to be serviced. So those are some things you got to watch. Espresso machine, you should be cleaning it consistently with a Kafiza or a Pearl cap, which is just an espresso cleaning powder where sometimes they come in tablets. Right. You, you should know how to do that. And if you don't, I could walk you through it, but just Google it. Uh, just mm. YouTube. The other thing is that you would want to clean is your grinder. So more people yeah. are probably going to have a grinder that's going to need cleaning versus a brewing machine, especially for at home. Um, and a grinder is going to get, as Matt said, gummed up with um, leftover grounds, your coffee oils. If you yeah. are grinding dark roasts, an oily bean, all that oil is going to get stuck in there. So yeah. what I like to do is when you like, Oh no, let's say you brew every day, like once a week, go in your grinder, wipe everything down with a paper towel so you just get rid of like the, the oils that you can see. Keep everything mm. nice and clean. Get a dollar brush from Home Depot, like a paintbrush, and just brush out. Like my grinder has like a spout. It's an electric grinder on my countertop. So it's not like a yep. hand or anything. Just like brush out everything you can find um and then if you really if you find like your grinder feels like you think it's really dirty there are these things called grinder pills that mm. you put a cap full in and you grind through so you will waste some coffee because you have to grind through grinds to you have to grind through some coffee to kind of rinse it yeah um but it will kind of absorb all the excess oil and flush it through so yep. if you haven't ever cleaned your grinder ever i'd recommend investing in some and you can mm. buy it on amazon you can buy that any coffee supply store or website um right. super convenient super um safe non-toxic yep. if, if you accidentally brewed coffee with some of them in there you'd be fine but yeah yeah so that that's the key phrase of the day for people watching thanks for everyone watching by the way I know, I love um it. lots of people jumping in here mm. Real um, quick, we just talked about if you just joined us, we were talking yes. about how to get the most out of your coffee. We talked about brewing ratios and how don't use too much coffee. So mm -hmm. be sure to check us out what we said there. And then we just finished talking about using clean equipment. And I think we should segue into using the best water possible. Okay, go for it. We talked about using a clean kettle. That's super helpful. Um, as Matt said, coffee is ninety eight percent water. So the better I could be a percent off, but you get the idea. It's ninety-seven <laughs> to ninety-nine percent water. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> yep. So the water that you use to brew your coffee is super, super important. Um, and so don't use your tap if you can avoid it. Um, use either a filtered water that you get from your Brita filter or what have you, whatever filter tra fil filtration system you have. Or, and we're about to be really extra, 
go to your grocery store or go to wherever you can get water jugs and get a gallon of distilled water or reverse osmosis water. And then this is the extra extra thing. This is very, this, this is, if, okay, disclaimer. If you want your coffee game to be pristine, <laughs> what Natalie's about to share is pro level. It is pro level. And then I will fun. share something that's more, yeah. okay, so go, go for it. This is what I recommend it because disclaimer. it's that expensive. It feels like a super ridiculous thing to go out and buy special water to brew your coffee, but it's it's fairly inexpensive way to make sure that you're getting a consistently good cup. So yes, it's not free like your tap water, but as opposed to buying a $200 grinder or another expensive piece of equipment, going out, buying a gallon jug of reverse osmosis filtered or, or distilled water and then there is this thing now you don't want it to be mineral free so there is this thing called third wave water and they sell these little packets of minerals for your water they help they basically so you can put it in a distilled or reverse osmosis water they reintroduce minerals into your water that are good for coffee brewing you yep. need minerals in your water to actually catch on to the coffee particles and extract the coffee um, so having the precise amount of mineral base, which is incredible. So if you ever go to a coffee shop, they have a filtration system that takes out minerals and adds minerals in so that you get the best cup of coffee possible. So coffee yeah. shops do this. There's just now a way for you to do that at home. It's called third wave water. They come in little packets. They're not super expensive. Fill it, put it in your gallon jug, use that in your kettle, um, and that's kind of my my thing about water that will take <laughs> okay my uh another i didn't really get to the key phrases of the day but we'll get to that <laughs> um if you don't enjoy the water that comes out of your tap you can't expect it to do good things to your coffee true so depends on where you live i'll say it's a big part of it. Um, some rural towns and places around, like Natalie and I are living in Durham region, close to Toronto. Yeah. And our water, in comparison of other places, is okay. Yeah. If you go a little more north, some patches are, the coffee's a little more hard, so you're going to be left with more residue in your kettles. You might notice in a dishwasher or something, you're cups have a little bit of a fog to them that's just like from the water so that those are all things to take into account when you're brewing with that water because that means you will have to clean more often you might uh want to integrate um like the vinegar rinse into more things more often and also if anyone has any cleaning alternatives to vinegar i'd love to hear those if there's something that's more efficient or better um just send us a message because i want to hear those um so what were the key phrases of the day so wait, let's wait, start with what's your, what's your water hack that's what do you have like a water way that that was it that, that was my thing that was it. that was my thing okay because even like sometimes i think about it i'm like oh shoot my tap water might be like okay but someone else's tap water could be like yeah Ugh. yeah who knows and this is why not to plug it again but third wave water honestly if especially if you have like a like a super hard water it's worth it go buy a gallon from your grocery store yep. or a couple and fill it up and and yep. use it. it'll save your kettle too you won't have to clean your kettle as often and, all over, um, and if you have an at-home espresso machine, uh, you should be doing this mm. because tap water could, depending on in your tap water, it yeah. could significantly reduce the lifespan of your at-home espresso machine. Yeah. Um, I can't. Offer. And most likely a lot of machines, I'd say. Yeah. Just I, I don't machine. know about like a normal brewing machine, but like definitely yeah. an espresso machine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. What else? So summary. I think that's all of them. Are those the three? Those yeah. Are the three. 
summary would be clean equipment. Clean that equipment. Um, brewing ratios. Brewing ratios so that you don't waste coffee. Don't waste it. That's an uh-oh right I there. More coffee means better coffee. No. And less. Yeah. I, yeah. That's great. Uh, last point. Uh, what's coming out of your tap? What is coming out of your tap? Yeah. There you have it. If you've done everything and you still feel like, what am I missing? It's probably your water. That's it. That's your, that's your next level up. Yep. Level up. We're all about leveling up here. We are all about leveling up. And hopefully in simple and somewhat easy ways. Yes. I would say if you are listening to this right now and you have a grinder, after this video, please go look and see if it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, because those oils will spoil, and every time you grind That's coffee, a great phrase. it's going to go through that spoiled oil, and um, <laughs> it might not be super bad, but it'll be hot to just be like, hmm, just a little taste. Yes. A little taste of funk. A little taste of funk. No one wants that. Okay. Yeah. Well, guys, it's been well, good. Thanks for yeah, thanks for hanging out everybody. Uh tune in next week. We have some surprises and thoughts to share next week. Uh so yeah. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.